<laughs> this here is everything, everything you want from this location. You want from a morning in Tuscany. Absolutely glorious. So finally, some new landscape photography adventures. And I have finally, after many, many years, made it to Tuscany in Italy. What an absolutely stunning place. And I've come to one of the very famous spots here in Tuscany, this little cluster of cypress trees, which is standing in some rolling hills and it looks beautiful and we have absolutely <laughs> gorgeous light like we are entering the golden hour right now I have the sun up here behind me so even though the scene from this direction here is almost front lit it still looks really really great because I have dark clouds up here so we get this beautiful contrast between the very local light on the foreground that carves out the hills and then a dark background so you really have the subject to really pop out on the bright foreground and then the dark background. Looks stunning. So yeah, I'm playing a little bit around with different foregrounds in this area here. But in all honesty, I do think that the clean shot, more or less straight on, is one of the better ones. Also got one with a trail that looked really, really cool. I'll show you that here. And then I'm also just playing around with some of the grass you can see right here in the foreground. And we have a bush with some yellow flowers right here. And just a whole lot of different things I can incorporate into this beautiful, beautiful, little simple scene. During the shoot at this location I only used my Tamron 28-200mm as it covered all the focal length that I needed. However, as we also visited this location during night to photograph the stars and the Milky Way, I had brought my Sony 20mm f1.8 which is a fantastic lens for astrophotography. It's both wider and has a more open aperture than the Tamron 28-200mm, so it is a lens that really gets the astrophotography job done.
I tried out many different compositions and these two turned out to be my favorites. One straight on with a clean foreground of barley and one with the trail, which I think adds so much depth and dynamics to the scene. I cover leading lines, visual flow, depth, subjects and many many more compositional tools in my two ebooks on composition. Both ebooks ends with a chapter where I summarize all the different compositional tools I cover and both ebooks are easy to read with minimal text and loads of examples. So, if you want to learn more about composition, be sure to get them via the links in the description of this video. So, we have made it to the absolutely, surprisingly gorgeous town of Siena. I say surprisingly because I didn't really know about it. But it is a beautiful old town in the middle of Tuscany. And it has that really Italian vibe about it. We have of course been real tourists and have been walking around the town and just explored it a little bit and it has so many beautiful narrow streets and of course I've taken loads of snapshots some of which you can see here but there is one composition I think really really stands out for us landscape photographers cityscape photographers and so forth and it is literally taken from one of <laughs> the biggest parking lots in the city so it's a nice welcome when you actually arrive to the city to see this absolutely incredible composition. As you can see right here with the big cathedral, the big Duomo. And it is really, really simple, just straight on. I want to have the Duomo right there in the middle and then I try to layer all the houses in a proper way, cut it where it makes sense. You can play a little bit around by walking along the street here over here there's also a street so you change your view a little bit compared to where i'm standing right now now we're not going to stay here to the blue hour even though i prefer to photograph towns like this in the blue hour so what do you do if you only have midday light to work with luckily midday light isn't too shabby when you have a polarizing filter and i'm shooting with the long lens i'm shooting at like 100 millimeter so it's my 28 to 200 millimeter lens i use put on the polarizing filter it darkens down that blue sky and when you have light on the foreground it still comes out as quite a beautiful little bit ethereal looking photo where the duomo and the town really stands out on a relatively dark background and then you have those beautiful white puffy clouds above so polarizing filter really makes a huge difference and then of course it's always good with this travel lens 28 to 200 millimeter Tamron lens it works in yeah almost all situations in regard to the settings there's not a whole lot to it in midday light there's so much light that I'm just shooting f11 because it's a sharp aperture ISO 100 and then I can handhold it even with the polarizing filter on because I'm shooting at like one two hundredth of a second. And yeah, that's basically it. We also went to this beautiful and very well visited road with rows of cypress trees on each side. As you can see the road bends beautifully down towards a house in the background. From the drone I captured a beautiful photo and from the ground you can also capture some different perspectives. For this location I also used my Tamron 28-200mm to at various focal lengths. As per usual I shoot at f16 to get the entire scene in focus. Due to all the activity and I guess an engagement shooting, I also tried to incorporate some of the people walking in and out of the scene.
On another sunset outing, we visited a small chapel. I didn't get to vlog anything from this location, but I did use my wide angle to capture the small flowers as a foreground and newlyweds who were running around in this scene, and afterwards I used a long lens from the other side of the chapel for a post-sunset photo. Now we are at the Belvedere house, which is like this one out here, probably the most famous Tuscany location of all, and probably the most photographed house in all of Italy. And we have fog, we have sunrise, we have layers, <laughs> it is everything you want, I'm just super excited. Uh, right now I'm time-lapsing the location to get some more fog. I've been time-lapsing before, before the sun came up. Right now, when the sun is coming up. And we actually have more fog now than we had earlier. So, it is just everything that you want. I'm using uh, mainly the long lens now, 100 to 400 millimeter to just stay in the theme of this video, which I haven't talked uh, too much about. <laughs> but. It's uh, when it comes to, to, to the gear, obviously there is no right gear, um, but obviously there's always gear that is optimal for the situation. And that is why I usually say that when you do landscape photography, you for the most part want to cover everything from 16 to at least 200, preferably 400 millimeter. And, and when you're on a location like that, uh, right here, there's so many layers, there's so much to shoot not just the main house, I'm introducing a little bit of foreground in this location, but also out here with all these layers, there's like a mountain peak out here, there's like a church tower over here. So being able to zoom into all these different details around in the scene here with a 100 to 400 millimeter lens, or at the very least a lens that goes all the way to 200 millimeter, it's just, so important to be able to do that. Like if you were standing here with a 16 millimeter lens, you would be like, oh, what to do? Um, but yeah, I don't know what more to say. Like this is just absolutely, absolutely glorious. As per always, aperture priority, I'm in on F13, I think. It seems uh, that is sharp for me this morning. Um, I'm not really using a whole lot of like immediate foregrounds. I'm just shooting into the valley. So technically I could shoot at like F5, 6 get an even faster shutter speed. Could be preferable if there were some birds flying into the scene, but there's surprisingly few birds right here. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> this here is everything, everything you want from this location, you want from a morning in Tuscany. Absolutely glorious. So in regard to composition, there is not a whole lot to it. It is basically just shooting the house which is down here. We have a little bit of foreground that I try to avoid, but I'm including the bushes around here. Right now, the fog is laying just perfectly around the house, so it's standing out really, really nice on the background. As you can see, I'm still time-lapsing right here, but you get an idea about it. This is also like the most traditional composition here, so Compositionally, there's not a whole lot to think about, but obviously <laughs> when you're here and you're taking the photo, you see, ah, oh, that is why it makes sense. Um, yeah, zoom a little bit out, zoom a little bit in, try other stuff around in, in the hills, because it makes a whole lot of sense right now when, when you get that combination of atmosphere and fog where the, and the light, where it hits the side of the hills and just carves out the landscape. Yeah.
So we've come over to another angle. You can see people are standing up here behind me. I've come a little bit further down. They have already been here and shooting the same house and basically just, yeah, from another angle, have a little bit more of a road coming in right here. Still have the fog to really emphasize the house and make it stand out on the background. Have a little bit of tree up there and uh, yeah, there's actually also a hot air balloon coming into the scene. I haven't changed the whole lot. I'm still using the 100 to 400 millimeter lens. I'm all the way at 135 millimeter. So zoomed quite a lot out on this lens. But yeah, F13 ISO 100 gives me a shutter speed of 1 16th of a second. I could overexpose it a little bit as you can see here just to get a theoretically even cleaner photo like this because it is quite a flat scene as you can see on the histogram right here that I have everything well within the histogram and I have plenty of space on either side so I may as well just expose a little bit to the right and get even more information into the photo and theoretically an even cleaner photo afterwards but this is <laughs> this is everything everything you want from a location like this i keep saying it but <gasps> Throughout my trip in Tuscany, where this video is only the first of several I'll release over the next weeks, I've got to use all the gear and that's basically also the point of this video. There is no best gear, well at least besides the gear that gets the job done. As I predicted, I've definitely relied more on the longer focal lengths on this trip, but the wide angle is surely also being used. I got a few more photos this morning I'm happy about, but before I show you these, if you want to learn how I edit my photos and want to acquire such post-processing skills yourself, then be sure to enroll in my huge Photoshop for Landscape Photographers course. In this course I teach you the basics of the programs all the way through the advanced techniques like focus stacking, blending photos and working with luminosity masks. There's a coupon code in the description of the video if you want to save a bit of money. Remember to check out the links in the description for the ebooks, the Photoshop course, and my newsletter with announcements of workshops, new products, and new video releases. As always, I'd highly appreciate both a like and a comment.